Welcome to Tier List, everybody. I'm Morph. And I'm Laser. And we're going to talk about some conflicting subjects today. And today's subject is cartoons. Now, these are cartoons that we possibly grew up with. Some of them, maybe. Uh, there's a lot of names on here. So we're going to dive right into this. And uh, we're going we're gonna to grade this on a Matt Damon scale. Now, uh, you can see here oh, yeah. that uh, there's some pretty amazing movies. There's some pretty crappy ones and some that I've never even freaking heard of. So uh, let's, let's just get right down into it. So, first on this list is uh, 16. Now, I, I've never heard of this show. Uh, have you? We're, I've never seen this show <laughs> at all. <laughs> we're we're, we're going we're gonna to put it uh, at uh, Matt Damon's Suburbicon because we, we've never never uh, heard of this. Uh, I, I've seen it at one point in my, I guess, teenage years, but I outgrew this show before it even came out. So, next on the list, Nate, yeah. Adventure Time. Ben! Give us what you think about Adventure Time, and uh, don't be uh, don't be too shy on this one. Being thirty three, um, uh, this this one came a little late in the game for my generation, but I remember the pilot episode for this uh, airing on YouTube before it ever got picked up by Cartoon Network. Honestly, some of the best storytelling, and it probably set the tone for a lot of our modern cartoons today. Yes, being definitely. very random and. Uh, with its joke writing plus you can't beat jake the dog i adventure time for me is definitely in the matt damon martian category the some of the first shows that we've talked about are like on the first part of the list and it already belongs up there it's already won awards in the past it's got such a good cast of actors and voice actors this like adventure time is that show jake is literally uh a dog it's the dog version of Danny DeVito, but just clean enough for kids. <laughs> right, right. Just like, well, what do you mean? Like, I, I can't do his voice, but... Uh, I've watched the... maybe one episode. I think this is the uh, the Rugrats all grown up. Yes. 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 It sucked. It was terrible. <laughs> there is some nostalgia to it. Like, right. I, I can't go back and watch the Rugrats now because... I mean, it is a cartoon show about babies, but as a kid, I loved the Rugrats. I grew up on yeah. that as it was airing. Yeah, S yeah same here. Um, like, Rugrats was that show. Yeah, and I don't care what anybody says. Rugrats yeah. was – those creators had to have been tripping on some type of drugs because there were some episodes that <laughs> – Yeah. were <Yeah>. out there. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we got, okay. uh, we got Amazing World of Gumball. So, uh, Guilty Pleasure – this is actually a pretty funny show. This show is even awesome. for an adult. <laughs> yes. Ma'am, do you find the new speed bumps in your neighborhood a nuisance? Yes. I believe these imported speed bumps do not fit the regulation standards. Surprisingly, again, it's this is probably one of the brainchilds from the Adventure Time uh, after the, the Adventure Time phase. I, I think really I think good. respectfully it deserves at least Goodwill Hunting, like yes, yes, yes. All right, we can we can decide not on that. Good. That not the best, but pretty yeah, good. it's it's really good. It's really good. Now, oh goodness, <laughs> this show. Uh, I I I watched this show when it first came out, and I I haven't watched any of the newer episodes. Now, American Dad has this nice nostalgic feeling for me. Because it's, like, I feel the same way about Family Guy. You can go back and watch the old episodes, and they're just so well done. But the new episodes are garbage. Like, they're, they're so random, and you can't even understand what's going on. So, like, because of that factor, yeah. I'm putting it in True Grit. It's a good show. They did such a good job. Seth MacFarlane put, like, a lot of time, and his wife is in this show, it's so good. Like, the back-and-forth banter between him and his wife is hilarious. Like, Adventure Time, I can go back and watch every episode and be happy with it. I can't do that with American Dad, and that's why it's going yeah. true. So next, we have a hidden treasure, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Hey, Carl, you want me to shampoo the rug? What's the freaking point, meat man? So you can give me some money. What an iconic character you get from that show. Um, I believe his name is Meat Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Do, do what now? <laughs> do, do what now? This show aged 
so well. Yeah. Um, again, you still had sporadic storylines, but the fact that they could just take a box of fries, a milkshake, and a meatball, and some of the episodes never left their house. Well, most of the episodes never left their house. They were still able to bring in rich characters, uh, a lot of funny comedians to voice characters. Um, I'd say this one's a godfather to adult cartoons, so right. I, I'd put it up in the in the Martian category. Next on the list is an absolute gem of a show. To me, it's one of the best animated shows on well, used to be on Nickelodeon. Now it's uh, in that nice, wonderful graveyard buried next to uh, all of the other uh, big name gems out there. Avatar, it's going in Martian. I, I don't even have to talk about this. It's just that good. Award winning. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Uh, kiddish at times, but rich storyline. They did the best. It's one of the best running series for what's not considered an anime. Uh, should still be on Netflix and uh there's been a lot of controversy of them possibly doing live action a lot of the creators jumped out of that we'll get into that later if it ever happens but right. it probably won't happen and it may not be good if they continue without the creators batman the animated series also award-winning set the tone for a whole era of batman comics um kevin conroy iconic voice um, and also notorious for its scowling from Batman. Um, I think you could go back and do a, a scowl counter, and it's just people talking to Batman and him going, <clears throat> <laughs> and then his little white eyes going squinty. Right. So I, I honestly feel like Batman was just, uh, you know, my dad at an old age. <laughs> 100%. Top tier. Top yeah. tier. Yeah, 100%. Next on the list, we got Ben 10. Wasn't part of my genre. I was way overgrown when this show came out, so uh, I'm basically putting it in stuck on you because of that. I I hear that it's a good animated show, but it's too kiddish for me. I'm sorry. So I am a uh, giant child and <laughs> ended up watching a lot of this series uh, <laughs> in my teen years, which is weird, I know. Um I, well, I like cartoons. It's what I do. Um, Where do you think this belongs? Again, Where do you think it belongs? Uh, I'd put it up in Born Identity, simply because it did have a, right. a lot of tropey superhero arcs, but I like it because it's an original idea. Uh, it's really hard to create original content, especially with so many comic books like Batman, Superman. You know, for a kid's cartoon, they did a really good job. And I got to be honest, even the live action movie they did on Nickelodeon was never watched that cool, either. But never watched that either. Next on the list we got Big Time Rush. This was another show that um, came out a little bit too late for me. I was already uh you know in the end uh days of my high school it wasn't really like that great for me and I maybe watched like one episode was, of it. It it wasn't that big. I really didn't watch it. It's going on super time for me. <laughs> Yeah, let's big time rush through this one because I, <laughs> I don't know that one. Next, we got the Boondocks. What do you think about the Boondocks? Oh, the late great Reese, not Reese. Uh, that's Reese Witherspoon. That's an actress. <laughs> um, his name is Witherspoon, and I believe it's John. And I'm probably gonna hate myself because I was a big fan of his. Um, he was on the Wayne's Brothers uh, show. He played the dad there. Uh, Friday after next. He passed this past year, if people don't know already. Right. Uh, but he's that one like, damn it, boys, listen here. Right. And, and would do that, uh, have that little voice. Um, great guy. Again, an original series, some, some of the best writing and voice acting, uh, filled with language we're not allowed to say uh, on or off the air. Just honestly, it, it, for a com for comical reasons, I would put it in uh, the Martian Matt Damon category simply because it pushes that boundary with comedy. Right. It it is offensive, but it's for the reason to poke fun at things and address real problems in the world. Right. It definitely belongs in Goodwill Hunting as like the minimum. If there was a category yeah. between the two, I'd put it there. But I don't really think that it's like on the same level as like avatar and batman like those are like you know 
great okay. award-winning shows, but I definitely okay. believe that it is iconic. Yes, it is an iconic show. Next, we got Camp Laszlo. All right, and I, I don't remember much about this show. I don't remember this one. Yeah, so <laughs> I think there's like a monkey. I I don't know or something. I don't know. I I I think I I've watched remember. it for like a split second, and the, that was it. Like I can't remember it. Next on the list, we got Cat Dog. Now, this was an iconic show back in that golden age of cartoons as well. I they had some great episodes, um, but yeah, middle tier. I'd probably put it at Born Identity. All right, yeah. Um, stands stands alone had its own. You know, it was awesome, but right. Again, if there if that was on and I had Adventure Time, I'd probably watch Adventure Time instead. So next on the list, we have Chowder. This is a sparkle bar. Fish are dumb. So when they see something shiny, they can't stay away from, uh, uh, <laughs> Chowder is hilarious. I love this show. For being a man-child, <laughs> this show is so good. I love the characters in this, uh, especially, I don't even know how to describe them, but the guy that just goes, rada, rada, rada. Rada, rada. That's all he does. He never says anything. Like he's like uh, he's like their Groot, pretty much. Right. Right. Um, he's he's hilarious. Chowder. Honestly, I feel like uh, someone took SpongeBob and then mixed in more drugs, and then Chowder <laughs> came out. Honestly, I would probably put it in the True Grit. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I think the best. There. Next, we got the Cleveland Show. This is a good show. I think it does belong. Kind of on the same tier as like American Dad. So Seth MacFarlane has this amazing knack to find just a great way to tell stories within the first few seasons. Right. Unfortunately, uh, Cleveland Show didn't make it past those first few seasons. This is one of my favorite shows to go to, and I ask him like, "Have you seen Cleveland Show?" And there's, you know, uh, and it has one of my favorite characters, Cleveland Jr. because. He's just so lovable and he's chunky and I right. can relate to him because I'm lovable and fluffy. And and it also has one of my favorite lines uh, in that. And it's with Rollo and Cleveland Jr. Uh, Rollo's trying to teach Cleveland Jr. how to pick women up. Right. So he, start, he starts out and he's like, did you know that you can pick a woman up by taking their hand and drawing an outline and then you can make a turkey? And then Cleveland Jr. goes, <laughs> never been turkey fingered before <laughs> <laughs> agreed i would put it up there with american dad in the matt damon true grit uh category but i feel like we would we would be wrong to not address some of the secrets of that show all right so next we have the star wars clone wars cartoon <laughs> main man uh dave filoni uh is is the main creator of this show took the reins over he studied under george lucas he specialized in uh computer or not or animation but not computer animation so he was literally learning as he did this right and was still able to create a show this amazing like it's so rich with star wars lore like my rant before it pays an ode to material that's come before all right so i don't even know what the hell the next one is can we just both agree that we have no clues what the hell cory in the house is all right uh that that's going there it's another another disney channel thing yeah. <laughs> sorry disney hating I... on your live action shows all right next on the list is uh courage the cowardly dog now another golden age top tier top tier you think hundred percent. You think it's in Martian grade? Hundred percent. The story, the storytelling in that show, amazing. The yeah. fact that they can say so much with a character that says so little. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, that, that's point, how you know. It. Point blank. Yeah. That's it's... why the story was so good. Yeah. Next on the list, cow and chicken. Now this was one that I did watch a lot. <laughs> it was hilarious <laughs> when I was a kid. I don't know if I can go back and watch it again as like kind of uh one of those no. shows that i can revisit <laughs> but i will definitely put it on cat dog level i think it belongs and kind of like in the middle of the road it was still a good show i just love the voice acting on it the chicken like a old uh 50s guy 
oh my god i can't even do that you know like <laughs> i'm not doing it right and then the cow the cow's voice was hilarious oh a chicken like, like, i can't do it but i love that voice actor so much yes they did such a good job and it, it's what made that show so fun next on the list we got danny phantom i did watch a lot of this show now i did watch a lot of it the animation was good the storyline was pretty good it didn't really hit with me as much as well, you know, like, I would say, like, Avatar and Adventure Time. It was good, but I didn't feel like it was that good. Favorite part of that was, I am the box phantom. Yeah. Beware of my box powers. That guy, uh, recurring joke, and it, it made the show for me. I loved it. Original idea, fun to watch, just right. kind of fell to the wayside. Right. Next, we got a gem. Dexter's Laboratory. Will you just get out of my laboratory? So, get out of my laboratory. I will, I will say real quick, I didn't like this show at the start when I was a kid. As far as, like, watching other shows, I didn't like it at first. I'm le du fromage. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you don't deserve to even watch this tier list. Oh, God, that, that was one of my favorite cartoons, man. Uh, I'm going to petition for it to be top tier. Next on the list is a show that I really love, okay? It Like, to me, it, it deserves to go up here. Like, like, it was that good of a show. Like, Nickelodeon did a fantastic job with them. You know, coming out of uh, all that and going straight into Dr Drake and Josh, it was it was great. Next on the list, we got Ed, Ed and Eddie. Ed, Ed and Eddie. Yeah. I watched the show nonstop. I can still watch the show. It it's that good. Yeah. It's it's that good. And again, another show that even when they started going to school and it, uh, the fact that there's no people in it. Um, I got a buddy that does a YouTube channel called Fanspiracies. Sees uh, Fanspiracies. Sorry, John. Um, he deep dives into shows. Uh, just doing a quick shout out for him, but I'm sure he'll talk about it. But why were there no adults in that show? It isn't any. It's legendary. It's going up in the Martian. Yeah. Uh, next on the list is Fairly Odd Parents. One of my favorite intros. Intro. The intro is fantastic, and I love it. Um, yeah, I'd put it in the maybe True Grit. You think so? I, honestly, I I, I think it I think it belongs in Goodwill Hunting at least. Like, I think it was that good. I think it was a good show. I mean, we it, uh, for, for being original, I I would I could see that. Yeah, you think you it's think, having its own concept because yeah. it's it stood out among other things. Yeah, it did, and it, it 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 did play its own role very well. Next on the list is Family Guy. <laughs> this is a legendary show. We can all agree. I'll I'll bring up the same point as American Dad. It's gotten a lot stupider over the years, guys. I know some of you may still be a really big Family Guy fan, and that's fine. To me. I don't watch these shows anymore because of the dramatic change from the way they used to be. When the show first started out, it was sort of trying to play on that Simpsons wholesome family show, but it added a lot of stupid elements that made you laugh. It was the comedy Seth MacFarlane put in himself. Now he's got all these diverse writers writing in certain things that's not his true ideas, and now the show has become this watered-down version of what he used to definitely stepped away from the creative process which definitely takes away from the show the stories used to be a lot richer and you know it really breaks my heart that i can't sit down and watch it anymore or well the fact that i don't have cable and they took it off of netflix not my favorite no definitely not next we got flapjack <laughs> I'm sad it didn't last longer but right that's it was, what was a great show that's what i was just about to say it didn't last that long it was a good show. It had that uh, that amazing um, pirate actor from SpongeBob. Yeah, I think he's like one of my favorite voice actors just because of his uh, his just raspiness and the way that he introdu introduces himself to shows. He's fantastic. It started on a different network. I feel like it probably would have lasted a little longer. All right, next we got a very old gem, the Flintstones. Yeah, but yeah, but do. 
Limpstones uh, was be actually before my time, and I didn't really get into it that much. Um, I did touch on it at certain points, but when I was getting into cartoons, I wasn't really getting into the older cartoons, all the ones that were on Boomerang and whatnot. So I I'll, arg I'll argue since yeah, I'm a, yeah, please. a tidbit older than you. Yeah, please. Um, not, uh, not too old, hopefully, but... Um, so yeah, I, I definitely grew up on this one, like grew up on it as a little one. And even when I was sick and missing school and I'd stay at home, again, the Boomerang channel, the, this one, the Jetsons, like, I don't know where I, I, I mean, I would definitely wouldn't put a top tier because it, it, it's just not. I'd, I'd say if now. anything, it's like right here. That's just me, though. I'd be okay. I'd be okay. It's not in the shite section just yet. No, no, definitely not. And I'm not saying that Flintstones is a bad cartoon. I'm just saying that it's rewatchability and you know going back and maybe touching on uh, you know on watching the show as of today is just not that great as other shows in my opinion. The next on the list we have is Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Speaking of insane, <laughs> yes. But this show was amazing. Can you guess who my favorite character was on that show? No. <laughs> Foster's doesn't really come up that much, but it was legendary in its own way. Uh, the ideas that uh, Cartoon Network put in for it, the 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 length of time that it lasted it was a great show so it's definitely going like in goodwill hunting for me next we have another legendary title futurama in the first episode if you pay close attention you will see nibbler's shadow and if you know what that means this show planted that easter egg right years <laughs> before it did the whole time sequence uh -huh. where nibbler went back and started that so that he could save the universe yep mm -hmm. oh they had the whole entire the whole entire story planned out top tier voice acting mm -hmm. storytelling oh. for me this is top tier oh yeah it belongs there it it totally and... belongs there all right so the next one mm -hmm. on our list is gravity falls now i've never watched this <laughs> It, this was another one that was past my time. Pretty crazy show. Uh, it's actually the creator's friends with uh, the creators of Rick and Morty, or w at least oh. one half of that. Oh, really? I didn't know that. It's a it's a, it's a cool show. Yeah. Um, it was fun to watch. It wasn't. I don't know. It's it's actually got a pretty big fan base. Right. But, well, uh, since since you're so comfortable with this one, where where would you place it on the list? Put it by old flapper Jack, Jack my Jackers. Uh, personally, I've never seen it, but just the the, the details that you've put into it uh, definitely sounds like it would be a pretty decent show to watch. All right, so now we got one of my personal favorite shows, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. <laughs> yeah, um, so what's interesting about this show is it's actually based off of a kind of dark comic the comic book does play a little bit into the silliness of billy but it showcases mandy more so than anything else in her relationship with grim the grim reaper and if i'm not mistaken i think she ultimately ends up becoming uh the next grim reaper which is pretty oh, cool but that's that's and, awesome and just for everybody else's uh fun billy mandy put down me scythe <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna place this in uh, in Goodwill Hunting. I think it belongs up there. I don't think it's the best show ever, and it is one of my favorites. But I think it does do a fantastic job to make it into the top of the list. Uh, uh, Nate, you got a doozy of a one next um, on the list. Um, you got uh, the the good old uh, uh, Miley Cyrus and Hannah Montana. Uh, how do you feel about that one? So I've never watched the show. Um, guilty pleasure. I like Miley Cyrus songs, and I am not afraid to say that. Uh, I'd probably just put it in Saboybacon just because. Uh, yeah, we, we, we. I don't think either of us have watched it. And no. I can't. I can't give any anything else besides that. I like her music. 
Wrecking Ball gets me. Okay. <laughs> Just gets me. <laughs> we have Hey Arnold coming up. This show um, is another one that when I grew up with it, um, when I when it first came out, I didn't really understand it that well. And as I started moving into like those teenage years, Hey Arnold was a fantastic show. Yeah, uh, it even had a network movie that was great that actually went to theaters, I believe. Yeah, it was... You won't catch me complaining about the show. There's, I probably can't pick out anything bad about it. Uh, honestly, I'd probably keep it in the Goodwill Hunting category of the Matt Damons. Yeah, I can, I can, I can agree with that. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Now, I don't think it's the greatest of ever of all time, but I think it does belong up there in, in the, the tier list. Uh, I did watch a lot of iCarly. iCarly. I did watch a lot of iCarly. For me personally, I'd probably, I'd probably put it in like True Grit because it wasn't like that revolutionary show. It was just a fun show to watch. It wasn't like Drake and Josh legendary. It was still good, but it wasn't like amazingly. You know what I'm saying? So the we, we've got another good one of mine that uh, I feel is um, is kind of those. It's not a guilty pleasure, but it's. Um, it's one that you don't normally think about, but when you do think about it, you think about all the crazy characters it has and just how amazing the show is on its own. Like it, it's in like a completely different category than most. It's dark. It's humorous. It's a good show in my opinion. It's it's actually another one. I don't think this one was based off of a comic first. I think the show took off and they created or ran with the comic afterwards but like most anime with a manga uh the the comic book actually dives a lot deeper into the world and the story and all the crazy dark theme things that they were doing it explores it a little bit more right me personally it's not necessarily my cup of tea and you know i, I do feel the same way uh, i know there's a huge fan base of evader sim still and uh I'm not particularly part of that fan base, so I'll, I I fit comfortably with Born Identity on this one. So uh, we're uh, we're going back into uh, the very early ages of cartoon again uh, with the Jetsons. If I had to pick, I'd say Flintstones was better. Uh, they did a lot. Of, they did a couple crossover episodes between the two shows, like back before crossovers happened. Uh, right. Again, these are written and drawn by a lot of the same artists and uh directors but yeah uh it, just an old school wholesome family fun cartoon uh, i honestly haven't seen it in over 20 years <laughs> so well i, I uh, i'll uh, i'll just set it in brothers Grimm, and then if we want to discuss about that yeah, more later yeah, we'll, we'll come back so and we'll, we'll improve it so this next one did actually come out around the time that i was watching cartoons and uh, this is another one uh, of uh, my my dad's favorite cartoons because of just how absolutely hilarious uh, hilarious it is. But it's it's a cool show. I mean, for Nickelodeon created Jimmy Neutron's movie first, and then they based the show off the movie, and it was good. I mean, it transitioned well, and it still holds up in my opinion. Um, I could go back and rewatch it if I wanted to. I I will uh, I, I will put it up in True Grit. I, I don't think it's going to go higher for me uh, as far as uh, it being up there with the God tier uh, cartoons out there, but it was good. I feel like it was definitely like kind of like middle of the road here. And uh, I feel mm -hmm. having it in that, you know, that B tier is, is good. The next one, Johnny test. I've never watched it. I don't know if you've ever watched it. I have a bone to pick with this show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to hear about it. So, this is a complete knockoff of Dexter's Laboratory. Ah. And I either have to assume that it's written by the same guy or people that worked on Dexter's Laboratory just decided to revamp Dexter's Laboratory. So in Dexter's Lab, you have Dexter, who's a redheaded, glass, glasses-wearing uh, scientist who has a secret lab in his house. And then you have Dee Dee, the right. dim-witted blonde sister that likes to mess stuff up. So what they did is flip everything. Is they did around. a little gender reversal. Yep. Yes. And they added a little bit of stuff to make it more original or not so much a copycat. 
Uh, this one's more, it's a little bit more campy, a little more action packed. So it's obviously to grab the attention of kids nowadays as to where Dexter's laboratory was a little more, in my opinion, was better story based. Uh, so on this one, I'd probably keep it. It's a, it was fun to watch for a moment. I don't really think it holds up too well. And because it's a knockoff, I'd probably put it in the brothers Graham category because it's a, you just can't knock off the greats and expect to be on the same tier list. So uh, we have Johnny Bravo coming up. He was, this was kind of like one of those shows that I would watch on the side of everything, but when it would come on, it was just great. It's a fun show. Uh, oh, mama. How many times do I have to tell you I have a boyfriend? Well, you look like the kind of girl that could use two. It's just fun. It's just a fun show. It's pretty meta. It knows that it's just absolutely ridiculous. Oh. I mean, his best friend is a Girl Scout. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's kind of sad because he's such a nice guy and he's so misunderstood. Yeah. Uh, I mean, kind of pervy, I guess. Yeah, I don't he's, know. he's seen as a womanizer, but really he has a kind heart. And, you know, that's yeah. it, it's, it's kind of playing a both roles. So really quick, guys, we're going to stop the tier list here. This cartoon slash live action show to your list was a little too big and the video would run over a crazy amount of time if we just kept going. So to keep things short, we're going to make this video a two-parter and continue on with the tier list in a different video. If you liked the list so far or you absolutely hated the outcomes of where some of your favorite shows landed, share it with us in the comments and let us know that you hate us for gutting your show. As always, keep up to date with new content by subscribing to the channel and like the video if you hated or liked the tier list so far. I don't know, but we'll see you in part two.